In my chapter on the doctrine of the church and what is the nature of the church, what are true and false churches, um, I include a section at the end about differences between Protestant, evangelical Protestant views and Roman Catholic beliefs, quoting extensively from the 1994 Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is an official uh, statement of what the Catholic Church believes, endorsed by the Pope. We agree with our Roman Catholic friends and neighbors on many doctrines, the deity of Christ, the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, and many other things. Uh, but there are significant differences. Uh, the one that is prominent with regard to the Reformation split of Protestantism from Catholicism had to do with justification by faith alone. And uh, we as Protestants believe that the Bible teaches that we're made righteous in God's sight by trusting in Christ alone for forgiveness of sins and for his righteous life being record being imputed or given to us and to our record, to our account. But the Catholic view of justification is progressive and it continues through life as we become more and more purified. And even after life, after we die, it, it isn't complete because there's still sin left in us and so we need to go to purgatory to have remaining sinfulness cleansed. And then finally, when we're purified, God declares us righteous and justifies us. But we would say, no, justification is a once-for-all event that occurs when we trust in Christ and we're forgiven. So, so Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Or Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, uh, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Um, so we differ on justification. We differ on purgatory, uh, which I just mentioned, um, in that we believe that when Christians, believers, die, we go immediately into God's presence in heaven. So Jesus could say to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Um, but Roman Catholics will say we have to go through a time of purgatory. I, um, I had an interesting experience of uh, teaching a summer school when I was at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Illinois. And in the summer school class was a delightful woman uh, named Mary who was a Roman Catholic nun. And we came to the material on final judgment and heaven and hell. And she said, um, Dr. Rudum, I just know I'm going to go through purgatory when I die. And <laughs> she was just a, a genuine, she had genuine trust in Jesus in her heart. Just her whole countenance and her conversation day after day were witness to that. And I said, Mary, you're going to have a really wonderful surprise. <laughs> There's not going to be any purgatory. Uh, so we differ on that issue. We differ on the issue of the authority of Scripture compared with tradition, whereas Catholics would take the authoritative teaching of the Church through history along with the Bible as a supplemental authority, but in many cases it becomes, I think, a, a superior authority. So we differ on that. We differ on the uh, infallible authority of the Pope to declare uh, true doctrine. Uh, when the Pope speaks along with the uh, bishops of the Church. We differ over the extent of the Bible in that there are seven books of the Apocrypha which came after the writings of Malachi and the end of the Old Testament that we have. And the Catholics include those in the canon of, or the, in the canon of Scripture. And uh, those books of the Apocrypha teach or tend to give some support for the doctrine of purgatory and the doctrine of justification by works. Uh, we would differ with Catholics over the priesthood as an exclusive means of dispensing grace to people, to some kinds of grace to people. Um, and we would certainly differ over the idea that we can pray to Mary or that Mary was uh, a co-redemptrix, uh, partial, partially contributing to our redemption. So uh, anyway, I list in the Bible, in the book, uh, 13 differences between Roman Catholic and Protestant views with quotes from the Catholic, Roman Catholic, uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and then a brief response from a Protestant perspective quoting scripture that would uh, give support to our, uh, to our view. Another uh, example is that um, our Catholic friends would say that the apostles had authority over the church and they would see Peter as the primary first pope, the primary authority in the early church, 
And then the apostles were succeeded by church officers throughout history who replaced the apostles but have nearly the same authority. And we as Protestants would say, no, the apostles left us their writings as an authority to rule as an absolute authority over the church, not their successive um, assistants or helpers or those who succeeded to their office of church leadership. Answering the question of what the Roman Catholic Church is is a complex uh, matter because the church is so big and so diverse. Um, when we lived in Illinois, we lived in a community that had a Catholic parish with a priest who was um, very strong in his encouragement of local Bible studies, personal Bible study, prayer groups. And, think, and, and Margaret and I here in Arizona have some friends who are regular attenders at a Roman Catholic church, but when we pray together with them, it's just uh, very similar to praying with our Protestant friends, and they have a love for Jesus and uh, a faith in him that's genuine and real, and so I'm thankful for that. But on the other hand, there are uh, Roman Catholic churches, uh, parishes, in various parts of the United States, and especially in other parts of the world, where they have... Um, become so dependent on the rituals of the church uh, and the teachings of the church, which in my view are contrary to scripture, that um, they unfortunately have never understood and believed uh, uh, what is the heart of the gospel, of trust in Jesus alone for forgiveness of sins and um, eternal life.